This video is a clip of a longer video where I show how to create this motion graphic scene from scratch. Click the card or the link below to check it out. To make the lines that go up, we're going to make a little bit of an animation. Take the black one, duplicate this one up, but I'm going to change the color temporarily here to something that we can see easily. And then we're going to scale this on the Y down to maybe like this. Bring it down here. We're going to start down here. And then we're going to add a keyframe on the transform on the Y because we're going to move it from here and we're going to go up. So keyframe and then I don't know how many seconds do we want. Let's see. Well, actually about let's do frames. So control T will toggle back and forth between time and frames. I think what I did before is about 210. OK, shift S to snap those there. Uh, and actually, we're going to pull this out past that. But 210 for now, because um, on 210, I'm going to pull this all the way up here. And I'm going to right click to cancel that, because before that, I'm going to also uh, I need to put a keyframe at the beginning here on the scale on the Y, because we're going to make it thinner as we go up. So then go to 210, and I'm going to bring this up here, something like this, and then SY to scale this down really tiny, something like that. And then we're going to add two keyframes there. So then this is what it looks like. It starts down here. And then it goes up and it gets thinner as it goes up, as it goes up, as it goes up, and like that. And then it stops. Um, but we want this to cycle. So let's uh, go over here and control end. And then let's select this. I'm going to pull this up. We're going to change the timeline to the graph editor. Hover over here, press home. And so here is our translate. We have our scale and our translate. So I'm going to hide the scale for now. We're just going to work on the translate uh, going uh, the movement. So we're going to extrapolate this or uh, make cyclic. So hover over here, press A, press Shift E, and then choose Make Cyclic. So now you can see uh, this is going over and over and over again, except for I didn't uh, make the um, scale cyclic. Uh, so we need to do that also. So undo, undo all that. Uh, I'm going to show the scale and then click normalize here and then press home. So now we can see both of them kind of at the same size. Otherwise, they're proportionally very different from each other. This uh, just normalizes it so we can uh, man maneuver these easier. So with all of these selected, press A, Shift E, make cyclic and now all of them are cyclic so as it goes up it just keeps on going up 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 and over up 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 up, up and away uh i'm gonna drag out another one of these we're gonna pull put this uh, timeline back okay i'm gonna drag the end frame way away so that we can see the effect that this is having now this is going pretty slow, you might think, but uh, when we, let's see, let's take these and just pull those out too. Uh, when we add more, uh, you'll see the effect that we're going for. You would think that it's slow, but when you get a lot of them together, it looks faster than it, than it originally did. So this is, I found to be a good speed. So now I'm just going to take the top color, uh, which is the green one, and uh, duplicate that up. Let's go back to the beginning. So I want this to, to come in maybe right here. So that's 70 frames in. So I'm going to take this, Shift S to snap that, and then that's, uh, and it's kind of blinking there, you can see, Control R uh, will refresh that. But that's still too far away, so I want to take this Let's go back to 70. I'm going to take the top color, grab, and then just move that because I want that to start coming in right about there. That's a good space in between that. 
Uh, so now the true one is 49. We're just going to make this 50 just to keep it even. Even-ish. Okay. So this is all right. But the problem here is that they're staying the same width apart. Um, they're not getting any closer together. Okay, just from the future, and when I was editing, my explanation was a little bit convoluted, so I'm gonna try to clean it up here a bit. But we're gonna close this gap here at the top, and so we have to do a couple of things. The first thing we need to do is adjust our curves down here. So let's bring this up, and let's go to where it comes up here. We wanna close this gap here at the top between them. So let's pull this up, and we want to select this one and then shift select this one because we want to adjust the handles for both of them at the same time. But this is too much because we don't want the scale, just the translate, so hide the scale. And then hover your mouse, press V, and then make sure the keyframe handle type is free. Now you can notice if we select a point, then we can only see the handles of the point that we have selected. So to make this easier, let's go to view and then uncheck only selected keyframe handles. And now we can see all of the handles and that's gonna be easier for our adjustment. So with our timeline cursor about right here, let's uh, take these two handles, adjust them G, Y, up like this, but don't go higher than the keyframes themselves, so stay like this. We can also do GX and pull them out. So you can see that gap is already closing right there. And then let's see what we have down below. Now see it's changed it down below. Um, now I could come down here and change these two and do the same thing. And I could just press G and then just free move them here, but they're not getting to the, the close uh, proximity that I want at this stage. Um, so let's go page down. So about right here is when I want the other one to come in. Um, so what I'll have to do is take the top one and then G and grab that and move that in to make sure we have a gap like this. And then we can see what that looks like. All right. And you can see they, they even get it even gets wider and then it closes up. And that's because our curves here. So we don't want that. We want to pull these up. So it's just one continuous curve, not an S curve, because an S curve is going to go um, wider and then shorter. So let's shift select both of these again with these handles selected. We're just going to make sure that this, it does go in and up. It just goes, starts from here and goes up in a single curve. So let's see what that looks like. Okay. And that's okay but uh, it's moved this down here. So we're gonna take the top one, we're gonna G to grab and move that up, something like this. Yeah, maybe move this out a little bit more, something like that. And maybe even take these and adjust those a little bit more. Yeah, so I like this. This is not too bad. But in order for us not to break the cyclic animation that continues to go on, we have to do one more step. And we have to take into account the frame range of the cycle. So right now, if we select the bottom one, it is from frame 1 to frame 210. And then the cycle starts over. Which means that we need this gap to be a division or a multiple of 210. So let's see what it is now, page down, and we are on frame 31 here. But that's not a 31 frame gap, that's the current frame, but the gap is from here to here, and remember here starts on frame one. So technically it's a 30 frame gap. So if I come back to here, we can see this by selecting the bottom one and then scrolling down to our time here, just open that up, and you can see right here the current frame is 30. Now that's 30 from whatever we have selected. So if I select this one, you can see it's zero because this is at the zero mark of the active strip. But if I select this one, it means that there are 30 frames from the beginning of the active strip to the current frame. So let's take our calculator, 210 divided by 30. Yes, and it is a multiple of 30. It's an even seven or an odd seven, but it is a multiple. So uh, we're good there, but if you had any other ones, so if you were 38 and you did that, 
you would do the same thing, 210 divided by 38. And then you can see, okay, we got 5.5 here. And you could either go down or up. You could say, okay, well, let's round up to six. So then we can do um, 210 divided by six, and that's 35. So then what you could do is you could be like, okay, well, we want the gap to be 35. And actually this uh, would have been 37 anyway. But no matter, we can do here and then just arrow over till we see 35 down here. So that's a 35 frame gap. And then we can shift S to snap that there. And now we want to create six of these here. But again, this is this doesn't um, line up to what uh, the spacing that I had it. It's actually closer to the 30 frame gap, which is at 31 here. So like this, and if I select this one, there's a 30 frame gap, which means we need seven of these. I'll just control R to refresh that. Okay, and make sure that's okay. All right, so we need seven of them. Let's make some room. So we can just uh, box select these two, shift D, and then hold control to snap to the end of the strip here. And with them both still selected, press G and then 30. So we're just grabbing them and moving them 30. So now we're maintaining that 30 frame gap for all of these. So now we've got four of them. Just duplicate three more, shift D, and then snap these here, and then grab 30 there. And now we have all of them with a 30 frame gap, and it will cycle over and over and over evenly, endlessly, um, in the way and in the spacing that we want, just like that. And it will go over and over and over until we end it ourselves. So let's see how long we want. So I'm gonna start with the first cycle. So they're, they're, all of them are there. So I'm gonna select the last strip we have here, and then I'm gonna watch my current frame and see the time. Um, six seconds, uh, let's just do, I guess we can go to 10 seconds. I, I, we don't really need too much more than that. So if I press Control End, that'll be my end frame, and we can see how that looks. And I do wanna keep the, um, the start of this here, just in case for stylized reasons later I wanna add some you know, different things to it. But um, generally, I'm just gonna have it start where it's already, you already see all the lines. So something like that. Okay, of course, we don't want these to be green. We want this to be a black and white mask. So let's take uh, one of these colors, make it active, and then just box select the rest of them. And then scroll up here and then change this one to black. And then right click here and select copy to select it. Now it's all black, and if I uncheck my overlays, we can see we have this black and white mask here. And it's just repeating over and over and over like this. So let's render this out. Let's go to rendering, and then we can pull this up, hover over here, press home, and let's just press F12 on some just random ones here, just to make sure that we are seeing what is expected to be seen. That looks pretty good. Okay, now let's go to our output properties. Uh, everything up here is good. Our resolution and aspect ratio, frame rate, and all that stuff is the same. That's good. Double forward slash graphics for the folder, and then another forward slash, and inside the folder, we're just gonna call this heart underscore mask dot mp4. And then come to here, make sure this says FFmpeg video. Now you can do a JPEG or a PNG or some sort of image sequence, that's up to you. Uh, I'm gonna do the video, black and white. And then color management, make sure this says sRGB and standard. If it doesn't, you can click override and change it here. Um, and then for the encoding, MPEG4, uh, and then everything here is basically the default, it's H.264, medium quality good. This is your preference. I'm gonna let you choose that. Uh, there is no audio here, so I'm gonna choose no audio. And that is it, I'm gonna save it. And now we're ready to render it out, so I can come up here to render and then render animation or control F12 is the shortcut.
find this video and a whole lot more by going to my new website, blenderfrenzy.com, where you can access lots of free and members-only content, including extra tutorials, downloads, assets, blend files, Q&A live streams, and much more. Signing up helps support me, which in turn gives you more Blender content, so head on over to blenderfrenzy.com and become a member today.